Hello and welcome to another video about computer networks. In the previous video, we talked about IPv4 addresses. We considered various options for determining the network identifier and the host identifier. And then we described class pool addressing as well as CIDR, classless interdomain routing, where an IP address is joined by a network prefix or a subnet mask. In this video, we'll practice these concepts and make sure we feel comfortable and confident with them. I encourage you to stop the video and try to answer the questions yourselves before watching the answers. So let us consider subnet masks and prefixes first. How do we represent a network prefix of 16 bits written like this slash 16 as a subnet mask? So we need 16 bits that are on. When eight bits are on, we get 255 in decimal base. So we would use 255, 255, zero, zero. Given this network prefix, do these addresses belong to the same network? Yes, they do, as they share the same most significant 16 bits or two bytes. Does this address belong to the same network as that of addresses one and two? Yes, it does. Again, it shares the same two most significant bytes. What about this one? Does it belong to the same network as the previous addresses? No, as the first two bytes are not 42.31, this is an address from a different network. So address four describes host one two within the network 42.32. Let's try the other way around. We have this subnet mask. How do we express it using a network prefix? We have three times 255 in decimal, which means three times eight bits that are on. So overall, we have 24 bits that are on. So we can also write slash 24. This means three bytes. Given this subnet mask, do addresses one and three belong to the same network? They do, as they both have the same most significant three bytes. What about addresses one and two? So given this network prefix, they don't belong to the same network. Address one belongs to network 423293, whereas address two belongs to network 42311. Network prefixes do not have to align to eight bits or four bytes. So let's say we have a network prefix of 14 bits. How do we convert that into a subnet mask? Well, the first byte is clear, right? We have eight bits on, so the first byte is 255. What about the next one? So in binary, we'd want to have six additional ones and then two zeros. So in binary, we would write one, 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 zero, zero. Overall, eight plus six, that is 14 bits that are on. So to convert that to decimal, we can simply use calculator or just Google it we'll find out that this binary stream of six ones followed by two zeros represents 252 in decimal notation. So our subnet mask is 255, 252, zero, zero. So let's think of another way to easily make this conversion. We know that eight ones in binary represent 255 in decimal base. We also know that one one in binary is three in decimal. So we can simply subtract three from 255 and get 252. Anyway, binary to decimal conversions are not the most important part of this video and using a calculator or Google should be definitely enough. Let's try the other way around then. We have the following subnet mask. So 255, 255, 224, zero. How many bits represent the network prefix? So the first two bytes are clear. We have 16 bits on. Let us convert the third byte into binary. So again, we can just use Google. 224 in decimal base is 111 followed by five zeros in binary base. This means we have additional three bits that are on. That is three bits with a value of one. 
So we can write the subnet mask as a prefix of slash 19 bit, 16 bit for the two, 255 and three additional bit for the 224 byte. Let's consider the following addresses. Are these two addresses part of the same network? Well, as we know, it depends on the subnet mask. If the network prefix is slash eight, then they are part of the same network and they share the same network ID. On the other hand, if the network prefix is slash 16, then they have different network IDs and thus don't belong to the same network. But what happens to the values in between? Well, they reside in the same network for prefix of slash nine. How about slash 14? Again, I encourage you to stop the video and try solving it yourself. The way I personally would approach this question would be to convert the second byte of these addresses to binary base. So for address five, this byte is 24 in decimal. So this would be 16 plus eight in decimal, of course. So we get one, one and three zeros. So I write it as three zeros, one, one, three zeros. Now that I add the three zeros on the left in order to align with eight bits of a byte. Again, if you're not comfortable with these conversions, you can just use Google. Now for address six, the second byte is 23 or 16 plus seven. So we get zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, one. So we can see that the most significant four bits within the second byte are identical. If we add the first eight bits of the address, we see that the most significant 12 bits of addresses five and six are the same. So if we we'll provide a network prefix of slash 11, do addresses five and six belong to the same network? Yes, they do. Their most significant 11 bits are identical. What about slash 13? Well, no, in this case, with this network prefix, they don't share the same network identifier as their 13th bit is different. Okay, I hope that now you feel comfortable with subnet masks and network prefixes and you'll feel confident converting between them when you need to. If you still have any questions, feel free to comment below or if you'd like to see some specific material that I didn't cover, please cover it as well. Before we wrap up, I would like to thank everyone who supported this channel through buying me a coffee. Really, it warms my heart and encourages me to create more of this content. So thank you so much. In the next video, we'll use a command line tool to find out our IP address and sound mask. Then we'll use Wireshark and filter only packets that are sent from our machine. In the video after that, we'll get to know some special IP addresses. So stay tuned and I'll see you all on the next video.